Good morning. Our gospel lesson this morning is from Matthew, the 21st chapter, verses 23 to 32. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, Why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regarded John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, We do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They, they said the first. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him, and even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. Here ends the reading from the Gospel of Matthew this morning. May God grant God's blessing in our hearing. Amen. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Question authority. Don't trust anyone over 30. A 60s theme of baby boomers, hippies and yippies, threats to challenge the status quo. The riots at the Chicago Democratic National Convention in the hot summer of 68. Violent Vietnam War protests the assassination of the Reverend Dr. King, the murder of a 19-year-old black riot bystander in Trenton, New Jersey, protest songs, eve of destruction, for what it's worth, the times they are a-changing, give peace a chance, Blowing in the wind, we shall overcome. A change is going to come. Fortunate son, and there were many more. 2,000 years earlier, there was a protester, a table turner, who was there to challenge authority, to flip the world order, a protester, a thorn 
in the side of the establishment who changed the world like no other. Like no other. Like no other. It had been a long trip by Sandal Leather Express for Jesus, the crew of fishermen, brothers Peter and Andrew and the other brother fishermen pair, James and John. Plus, Jesus was to add eight more average, ordinary men of the sea to become his closest followers and pupils and to become teachers in their own right, following the directions of the teacher. A change was a coming. Matthew tells us the ministry of our Lord began in his home region of Galilee, one up north, some to Caesarea Philippi, and then began the journey down through Samaria and towards Jerusalem. Just before our lectionary reading from this morning, Matthew upon hearing the chief priests and the elders of the people challenge his authority, we learned Jesus had entered Jerusalem with some fanfare. The holy city of Jerusalem was crowded with pilgrims who had come for the annual Passover celebration. We read that A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those who followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Matthew makes it pretty clear that Jesus did not sneak into town by some back alleyways or underground passages. His entry into Jerusalem was not preceded by any text messages, no emails, no Zoom, no Facebook announcements, Twitter or X, no LA Times, USA Today, or Highland Community News. Nothing. Yet the whole city was stirred even without any social media other than word of mouth. Miraculously, his reputation for healing, feeding thousands, performing miracles, and preaching preceded him. Now, importantly, Most importantly, this entry did not go unnoticed by the reigning religious authorities of the day. Those who would feel the brunt of the challenge to the very special place they felt they earned in Jewish society, the strict followers of the law of Moses, those chief priests and elders that were to question Jesus' authority to topple the temple. Jesus was challenging the status quo and wasn't sitting pretty with the religious elite. A change was a coming. The Gospel of Matthew has been following Jesus' journey over the course of the past chapters, and now we get to the final stop, Jerusalem. And what is Jesus' first order of business as he enters the city? Note that Jesus did not make contact with any of the leaders of the day. 
He did not suggest that they meet over a hot cup of coffee or latte or tea or hot chocolate or split a Danish. No, Jesus enters Jerusalem on his own terms, with his own agenda, and heads to the temple. There he drove out all who were buying and selling. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, Jesus said to them, My house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him at the temple, and he healed them. But when the chief priests and the teachers of the law saw the wonderful things Jesus did, and the children shouting in the temple courts, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant. Indignant indeed. After all, the chief priests had given permission for merchants and money changers to use the outer courtyard of the temple. Who was this new guy on the block to challenge their authority? They certainly would like to have and could have taken actions to stop Jesus. But these religious leaders were most concerned because of the large crowds who followed this special man and the people who were putting their hopes and trust in this Son of Man. Would they turn into an ugly crowd and turn against them if they tried to stifle this new preacher? The temple officials felt their authority slipping away. The status quo was being challenged. A lesson was being taught for future generations. A change was a coming, and the apple cart was starting to be flipped 180 degrees. In March of 1998, Eric Pooley wrote for Time magazine, Bull Connor thought he knew a thing or two about power. In 1963, the Public Safety Commissioner of Birmingham, Alabama, was ready to use water cannons and attack dogs on a group of civil rights demonstrators led by the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. The protesters responded in a way Connor found hard to fathom. They knelt in the street and prayed. Let them turn the water on, one said. Let them use their dogs. We are not leaving. Forgive them. Connor gave the order to mow down the marchers, and television beamed the scene to a horrified world. Among the viewers was President John F. Kennedy, who was so appalled that after two years of foot dragging, he suddenly threw his weight behind a federal civil rights bill. Who, who set that tone of demanding freedom through peace? That courage to challenge authority came most powerfully from one man 2,000 years ago. A change was a coming. In first century Palestine, there was no separation between church and state. The priests at the temple in Jerusalem not only officiated over the religious life 
of the Jews. They were also rulers and judges. So now, maybe the questions the chief priests and elders asked in today's scripture makes some sense. By what authority are you doing these things, they asked Jesus, and who, who gave you this authority? This authority to challenge our way of life for centuries, to challenge the status quo. These are really important questions and the crux of the passage and the catalyst for the parable that concludes our reading this morning. The religious leaders who are feeling pressure from the challenge to their authority want to know more about this new fella in town, the fella who is turning their world, the temple, literally upside down. Where did he come from? What makes him tick? Who sent him? What is his agenda? These are the questions the chief priests and elders want to know, and they want the answers now. I like the insight from Charlotte Cleghorn when she writes, It is easy for us to judge the chief priests and elders. But what if we were to put ourselves in the shoes of those chief priests and elders? What if we were to ask about our own tendency to want to keep things as they are, to maintain the status quo? What if we or to ask ourselves about our own resistance to change, to being transformed. What is Jesus asking of us? As we so easily ridicule these keepers of the religious establishment, put ourselves in the shoes of the chief priests and elders. Reverend Cleghorn makes me look at myself, causes some real self-introspection. Am I comfortable with the status quo? Am I comfortable coming here each week to share a message of Christ's hope with each of you? Is this to be the entirety of my ministry or your ministry? The status quo can be very alluring to all of us, me included. We get into our routines and comfortable with life each day. But am I, are we, too comfortable with the status quo? Do we need to ask ourselves if the status quo will allow us to pass along our faith, practice right here in Highland, California, to the next generation? I think we need to ask that question. So, what is the message that I hope and pray you take with you as you leave our home of Christian worship this morning? Jesus was turning the status quo upside down. It is not comfortable to leave the things we have known for so long, our way of life. But in each of our daily prayers, we should include the quiet question to the one who knows what is in our hearts asking God to help us open up and reflect on this question. Will the status quo, will the status quo leave a place of worship 
that will endure for all time. Amen. And now for the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>